Well, here we are. Same bit of river, same peg as what I stick float fished just a couple of days ago. And I'm back with a bit more tackle and I'm gonna be pole fishing the same peg, see what we can catch. I caught a great big hybrid and a nice bream and one roach and a nice big bleak last time I was here in just a couple of hours. Um, we're gonna see what we can do with a bit of ground bait and, uh, and pole tackle. I've got uh, everything around me. I've got my F25 box. I've got um, just a selection of rigs. Just popped a few in, all wire stems, so I just envisage a bit of wind today. It's quite windy again today, so nice and stable. I've got some of my favourite Desk Abbevilles, um, which has got a plastic bristle. And then I've got some uh, Colmic um, Stream Passants. They are just got a thicker bristle. They're what I generally use for big fish, and I generally use my Abbevilles for sort of normal normal fishing but ligging on a bit with big baits I tend to use these and I've also got uh, always bring a tub of flat floats and various shapes and sizes I carry the um, I carry the rigs um, separate and then I put the floats on as and, as, as and when to suit the peg so I've always got a, a big tub of flat floats mostly Creluso torpedoes and sensor stashes it's about 10 foot so um, um, and I'm going to be ligging on with big baits, chop worm and caster and double maggot and things. So I might have a flat float rig, but I don't think it's flowing that hard. So I might just use a three and four gram round body float um, for a heavy rig. So 10 to 12 or even 12 to 14 elastic, because there's some big fish in this river and it's very narrow and snaggy and stuff. Something like a gram, gram and a half for, for smaller baits and just tr catch what I can. So that's the plan anyway. I've got, um, I've got three top threes set up and a cupping kit and then bait wise if I just jump over no foot plate today one extra thing to carry out <laughs> um, I've got let's have a look I've got um, some casters they're not the best they're pretty old and ropey to be honest but they're nice and big they're actually the same casters I used last time I was here there's what's left uh, I've already chopped a bit of worm up just dendrous I've got a few pinkies we we'll try double pinky and things like that a uh, few red maggots just a handful a few worms for the hook and then this is the hemp i had left over from my last session there's actually still a caster or two in from from when i was last here so that's what i had left from my last session so we're just going to dink a bit of hemp and caster over the top and then the main ingredient i've got that's a bit different is a big bucket of ground bait that is uh, mostly a bag of sona baits lake about a third of a bag of sona baits river and a third of a bag of bream plus a couple of pints of soil out my garden just to give it a bit of weight um, and just help it to get down a little bit in the flow. But it doesn't look like it's flowing as much as last time, so uh, we'll see. But um, yeah, I'm just gonna cup it in. I could throw, I've got enough to throw. None of this is coming back with me, so I mean, we might ball it in. But I just fancy just cupping in five or six balls, running it over the top, see what happens. And if we need to ring the dinner bell, then we'll throw four or five big baby's heads in. So let's get rigged up. All right, to start with, I've just set up two rigs. So we're going with, I don't want to set up more rigs than I need, really. Um, my sort of normal, sort of medium light rig is a two gram desk Abbeville, and that's on um, 012 or 014 mainline. I've just got an Olivet, and these will be number nine or number eight droppers, just three droppers, to an 010 hook length and a 16 black nickel hook. Um, that's uh, 15 centimeters long, that hook length. And then, um, and then elastic wise, um, I'd normally fish like a six to eight, but I'm going eight to 10 because it's a, quite a confined peg. And uh, I want to give myself a fighting chance if I work anything big. It's better for perch and stuff as well. If, and if I work a bream or whatever, uh, or a chub. <laughs> and then the other rig is a heavy rig. And I've just had a little run through. Oh, someone's trying to ring me. Mm bring my wife back in there a sec this is more important <laughs> shouldn't say that should i sorry wife uh, three gram uh, stream percent thicker bristle this is on 020 line um and then i've got an o uh, same again olivet three number eight droppers i can shuffle these around a bit and then i well all my big fish hook lengths are tie 30 centimeters long and chop them down i've actually made this um 25 centimeters so like 12 inch um they start off at, I've chopped this down to 10 inch, 
to any if you're metric or imperial i just prefer a bit of a longer hook length for bigger fish i'll be ligging on a little bit laying on a bit more and flapping around with bigger hook baits um so that's 014 and i've got a 14 um mxb2 um which is a sort of a medium gauge but strike quite a strong sort of medium wire hook um, I could go up to a, a three if I need something even stronger um, and that's on 10 to 12 slick um, I've got some 12 to 14 with me in, if I'm struggling with big fish but um, I'm hoping 10 to 12 will be ample and uh, that's it they're all on top three like I say it's about 10 foot um, two rigs I'm debating which one to start on actually I'll either start on like half a worm or a double maggot I think just something nice and wriggly and active to, to kick off with so let's uh, get baited up I'm going to get four or five balls maybe six that I could just cup in nice and accurately and it's starting to rain right all ready to fully off I've got one two three four five six seven balls there I'm going to cup six long and uh oh big bow waves all coming up that's from a, a boat going up the up the arm this bit's not navigable but I'm just above a bit that is so uh, yeah I'm going to cup in um what did I say I was going to do a cup in one ball short just on a top three and then um, six long at, uh, 11 meters and that'll be enough for a starters I'm gonna always cut my uh, ball my close in ball quite a bit downstream I normally fish a little bit past me tip so uh so that's about right yeah it's a bit dead right that that's gone straight down and then I'm just gonna cup in six six nice and accurate I could could have thrown them, but I will cup them for uh, for accuracy. I don't like to throw if there's bream about, and there's, there's definitely a chance of a bream or two today. So we're going to pop that one there we're in a bit of a line, not all down the same hole, but in the same area, obviously. And um, I'm more bothered about catching quality fish today, so. Uh, if I wanted to crash it in and catch a big weight of roach, then that would be all right. That one's coming a little bit short, a little bit more upstream. Just putting about like a metre area, really. And in a bit of a line, so I can run it down. Oh, that's a slightly bigger ball. Just goes in. <laughs> I'm using the MXC, um, <laughs> I'm using the MTX2 pole today, so it's nice and strong. Don't need a pole roller, the grass is about four foot behind me. <laughs> this is the uh, hard bit really. I'm deliberately fishing about three metres downstream of where I'm sat, so I can run my rig over the top of it. And, and fish above it and still have enough of a trot below. I have to say, it's not a really fast flow. Last ball, I'll squeeze this one a lot, lot harder. So we've got one that won't break down quite so fast, I hope. We've got releasing all the bait to the fish. There's a load of bleak there. There's definitely some bleak topping. That's it. All right, that's the hard bit. Plenty of ground bait there. It's amazing how many just two bags of ground bait makes. Oh, I suppose a bit of soil as well. So that's it. We're gonna wipe our hands and we'll start quickly short. And uh, let's start on a lighter rig. Just put a single red maggot on. Let's flip these around. Or double red maggot. Single red maggot on a 16. It's a big hook for a single maggot but perch and that don't mind and this isn't a pressured river by any stretch so uh, we should be okay I'm hoping so I'm just going to hold it back right over where that ball goes you normally see where it's pin pricking a little bit there's definitely been some fish moving around mostly little fish little bleak but I had a great big bleak last time I was here on the stick float it's not settled right let's just flick it out a little bit more Just bombing it in to begin with. I would think just get it in nice and quick to begin with and then you can start being a, a bit more precise with everything once you're getting some bites. 
and once you're having to work at it a little bit more but at the start that's a bite straight away a bit bleaky definitely a little dink I always think wherever you want to fish first is where you should feed first because that's where the hungry fish the alert fish will go to first so I always expect to bite pretty quick on the river there's always a few perch about or bleak or whatever so I expect some activity or some response pretty fast if there's anything in the area nothing let's check that maggot yeah, so let's just pop a little bit of worm on and then I'm not going to waste too much time on this short line well these worms are dreadful I've seen better days I generally put the tail end on a river so it's nice and active on a commercial I generally prefer to put the head end on but on a river the tail end's much more active and I want to catch perch I want to avoid them on a commercial <laughs> it's a reasonably sort of medium medium to heavy rig this really with a 16 to 010 it's 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 pretty crude it's not a not a finesse roach rig but it's something that'll hopefully catch me everything and still give me a fighting chance if i look anything a little bit more substantial so we're just tripping bottom at the moment that one little dink and that was it but this is a throwaway swim this short swim it's exactly the same depth so it makes sense to have a little cup of tea swim should we call it somewhere you can just rest your arms nothing on that I'm just going to quickly try a double pinky there's a lot of little minnows or fry pimpling over it that might have been what the little the little dink I had let's try a double pinky and then this will be my last chuck on this line for a, for a little bit it's just a throwaway swim just to try my main swims at 11 meters i could have fished 13 40 meters tight across but that's the chub zone so we'll we'll come back one day and maybe just put some riot gear on and try and extract the chub from those bushes looks very chubby over there there we are oh prick tip whatever that was didn't feel very big just nicked one of my pinkies mm shot under it's another reason for starting off on quite a you know that's why i'm using like two gram rigs i haven't got any at the moment i haven't got a gram or a nice airy fairy rig set up just nice and positive keep just try and catch quality fish on the bottom that's that's my plan with this rig i can edge it through run it at them hopefully still catch some roach and stuff if it's out and out roach day I'd have a lovely a little half gram rig strung out like a stick float but as we proved on my stick float session there's a there's some quality fish in here <laughs> I'm surprised that's not just slammed under to be honest I think it was a bleak or something that came off last chuck and then we'll quickly go out to 11 meters if there's any good fish in the peg they often go on it straight away I mean sometimes you want to leave it for an hour but also you could be missing out on those quality fish that might not come back and come straight into the peg so it's always a bit of a dilemma do you go straight on it or do you leave it for a bit that might be a oh that was a crayfish <laughs> oh no that was a crayfish <laughs> I just saw it come off look it smashed it as well crayfish great that's the problem as well and obviously I've put chop worm in I know there's a load of crayfish in here and I knew that could be an issue but we'll see what we can catch amongst the crays and so out on this line that didn't take long did it took a crayfish 
Uh, we're just boshing it in, settled, it's right over the balls now. What I generally do, I've just fish about depth or just off the bottom to begin with. And then later on in the session, when the fish settle down a little bit, I start to fish more and more over depth and edge it over the feed. But I always think there's a few fish off the bottom rushing around to begin with. And then they tend to settle down and start grazing over those balls. Run it quite a bit far down there now. So let's just bring it to the, back to the top. Right, let's settle it. Let's make sure it's properly on the deck about two foot above where I've cupped in and then we can run it nicely over those balls. It's another reason for cupping in downstream a bit so you can get your rig all nice and right and then run it over the top and a lot of fish will sit above your feed which is always a bit of a strange strange phenomenon but a lot of fish will sit above where you've fed. Oh, that's a bite. There we are. First fish, not very big, whatever it is. But it's a fish. What is it? Cough. Smallest perch in the river. <laughs> that's not a good sign for your first fish. Tiny. Go on, let's put him in the net. We don't want to catch him again, do we? Let's put two pinkies on. And then we'll put a bit of worm on. Not a good sign. Bomb that down. Tiny little perch that, wasn't it? Now all I brought on my last session was casters. So, uh, and I caught quality fish on those, so uh, I won't leave it too long before I slip a caster on. I've not fed any maggots, but generally I like to fish, fish um, feed chopworm, caster, hemp, but, but sometimes you get a quicker response with a maggot on the arm or a pinky. Yeah, that's a good one, whatever it is. It might still be a perch, but it's bigger. Oh, roach. Whoop. Little roach. Yeah, Mr. Otter hasn't had them all then. Brilliant. Let's pop a single maggot on. If this was something like Evesham, a real hard river, I wouldn't dream of fishing a single maggot on a 16, but I tend to find on these wilder rivers and uh, less pressured rivers, you can definitely fish cruder gear. In the Thames, you can fish really crude gear, I think. There's a lot more fish in the Thames than the, than the Avon at Evesham that I, I fish quite a bit. I'm just edging it through. Just a touch slower than the pace. We can try running it at them and all sorts, but just slow it down a fraction. I always think them upper layers go faster than the uh, bottom layers. Not a great start, is it? A tiny roach and a tiny perch. But we know there's some quality fish. That's a better one. That's definitely a better one. What have we got there? A better roach. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, they're getting bigger. Bigger than the last one, isn't it? Right on the balls there. Eh? All the others have just come a little bit below. Little roach again. But I found it now, haven't I? I've not loose fed anything just yet. I, like, I always like to establish what's in the peg. If you loose feed too early, you just drag bleak into the peg, I always think. Might not need to feed again, might just need to keep flopping the ball in. I'm thinking if you're catching mostly roach, then you can lose feed, but if you're catching bream and skimmers, I'd rather just keep feeding a bit more intermittently. Mm -hmm. So on a short line, a little hybrid. Might be still alright, I'm gonna have a quick look. 
just started dinking in just a pinch of magus and a pinch of casters on that short line I just saw something flash then <laughs> like a bleak it's not a bleak or oh, it might be no roach hmm. nice to see some little fish in the river isn't it one more look short Let's put a worm on, on the big rig. Just put a fresh bit of worm on and uh, pulled the float up another four or five inches, so I'm probably laying on a foot now. Obviously it's not going to be a foot once you take into account the angle of the rig and everything, but it's uh, definitely more on the bottom, this, this up bait anyway. Just had a little dink again. Convince there's a load of big fish there yet, but you just don't know, do you? I'm very surprised this hasn't just walloped under. Oh well, we'll keep trying a bit of worm every now and again. Try double caster, three maggots, just bigger baits. <laughs> three maggots. <laughs> Didn't even get to the bottom. Big bleak. Not as big as a herring I had last time. <laughs> Look at that, smashed. Let's try two casters. And then we'll get back on the smaller fish rig. Or the lighter set up. And it's raining. So I suppose better put the coat on, hadn't I? Just come two or three inches off the deck, that is a big fish. Well, I've just gone two or three inches off the deck with single maggot on the short line. I've lost something massive. It's just pulled off in the end. Very big perch, I think. Ah, oh, that was a good fish. Gutted. Yeah, there's the obligatory stick fish. That's a little wobble on the worm. Got a full worm on now. Go on. One, two, three. Ooh. Oh. Well, that was a good bite. And I hooked the bottom, unless it was a crayfish attached. Ah. Oh. God knows. Definite bite, sailed under. Just firm resistance on the bottom. I'm snagging the bottom a little bit as well, coming back with bits of wood and bark and stuff, so God knows what's down there. Well, I know what's down there, it's a tree. But uh, how much of it there is, is uh, remains to be seen. And so far, the stick float's beating my pole tactics. I've tried an 18. 09 to an 18 hook now on that lighter rig it's not made any difference if anything it's been worse 
something's just gone by. I don't know if that was Mr. Otter or not. So it's definitely swam through. Mm. These fish are being very cute. <laughs> Two big bits of worm. Oh look, that's been like munched. Look. I would have said that's a crayfish that's done that. Yeah. See, look. I would say a crayfish has done that. Suddenly feels really humid after all that rain. And there's bleak topping everywhere. I'm just getting bleak to death on everything. I've just slipped a grain of hemp on. A bit of a crude rig, really. Two gram rig with hemp and I've had a roach straight away. It's not ideal hooking tinned hem, but if you find us one like that, it's only just split. Push an 18 into it. Yeah, it's clicking on all right, actually. Let's see if we catch another one on it. Shows are there, they're just worm caster and maggot are not what they, well, I assume they want them, but it's not what you can get through to them with. Let's bang over the feed. See if we catch another one on that grain of hemp. Going to go. There you go. Yeah. Big rope, that'll be. Two gram rig on the hemp. <laughs> there you are. Wow. Amazing, it? getting bleak to death. Try that again. It's not massive hemp, but they, they don't seem to mind it. Yeah, it's just wedged on. Two and two drops on the seed. Might even feed a bit this time. Let's feed a little bit as well this time. I've been dinking it in, I just stopped for quite a bit. Oh, I've already got some in my pouch. I've gone on the um, Yeah, I've gone from having a bleaker chuck, my least favourite river species, to a roacher chuck on one of my favourite baits. Yeah. Three and three drops. Oh, why does it always rain on me? Oh my God. Oh, and we got a good fish on. <laughs> oh, getting thick now. Good right. <laughs> oh dear me. <laughs> what am I doing out in this? On the caster now though, they're on the caster. If you can see. Nice big dace. First dace. I've been really feeding heavily with caster now. I hit a snag, so I've gone back to the 16 to 010. It's not made a difference. If anything, it's better with the, the bigger hook now I'm just fishing caster. And they're feeding it heavily. You get an odd little bleak hold up. But they don't seem to be smashing it, so it, bo it eventually gets through them. And then, uh, 
and the better fish are underneath them. Can't catch, see that's holding up there, but it'll eventually get to the bottom, and then I should get a decent bite. I've had a, I've had a few on him, cast is definitely better now. I'm catching a few more. I've gone another section down my peg a couple of times and caught an odden. But most of them are around this sort of area here now. It's like a two or three foot below where I fed my ground bait. The pace picked up a little bit with all that rain. Might have gone an inch deeper or so, I don't know. But fishing over depth and edging it through has not been right today. I keep catching the bottom, there's a lot of rubbish on the bottom. Fishing off the deck seems to be the way forward. Steam coming off the grass now, now that rain stopped. <laughs> down at that right at the bottom of the peg as well where well, I know some cast oh that's that something like that <laughs> just twitched it and someone grabbed it that's what we got there perch yeah okay not the intended species but not bad try a bit of worm again we tried a bit of worm for a while have we overrun by bleak again. I've just cupped a ball in, just laced with casters and a bit of hemp, and a few red maggots, single caster, nice chunky rope. Nothing big, but nice to catch, isn't they? Well, we've not had anything big today, but uh, plenty of bites. Bleak, 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 bleak. Definitely smaller on the maggot. Pop a caster back on. Topping up with worms has been a complete waste of time. Quite a claggy ball, very wet ball, with lace with hemp and castor. It's been uh, really good. I'm catching better ropes now. I've been cut out the loose feed and I've been doing that. Just popping it down the same hole. Pop that one in. Whoop. Come back, see how quickly it takes to catch one over the top. <sighs> Almost run out of casters now, though. <laughs> Get on, little fish. Best roach of the day. He's half a pound, isn't he? Best thing is just bomb it down without any finesse. If you lay it in nicely or make too much of a plop or anything, then uh, you get a bleak. Yeah. Oh, that was that big. Prick that one, whatever it was. About that. Not lost many fish, other than that one big one. Every time I fed with a ball, they come straight back to it. I've cut the loose feed out, I'm just popping in a ball now. Come on, let's try and end on a roach. I think 
think this will be my last fish. Definitely my last fish. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's a decent route to end on. Lovely. Well, I really enjoyed that. Nice fish to end on. Nothing massive today. I've lost one big fish. God knows what that was. Probably a big perch or something. Maybe a chub. But uh, yeah, nice to catch a, a net of these. One dace, one dace all on its own. Quite a few of those meddlesome bleak and uh, some roach on hemp and casters. Mostly on the caster. Great stuff. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you again on the bank. There we are. Not a bad net of fish. Just a few hours. Completely different to my stick plate session. We were caught quality fish, a couple of really big quick fish, and uh, they were conspicuous by their absence today. So, uh, but we've had some nice roach, some lovely roach on casters and imp, and uh, that's the best one, I think. Might be a big one in there. But yeah, nothing massive, but nice, nice, uh, a nice ground bait caster imp and uh, pole session on, a, on exactly the same peg as my stick float session. So uh, yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you on another video.